Okay, so I got something very important that needs to get out there. Uh, this is something that I've been meaning to do for quite a while now, and I feel a lot of shops always get pounded with this question. Every time somebody brings a car in, or if they want to tune, or they want to switch to a standalone, they don't really know where to go, or who to ask, or who to talk to. Um, it, it, the information is there, it's just not all in one place, and really the tune that you get for your car all depends on the type of car you want, what you want to do with the car, and how old the car is. Now, for me and my 300ZX, uh, these cars come with OBD1. You can chip the ECU on these and it'll work, it'll work okay. Um, if you're not planning on doing anything else to it and you want to tune the car maybe once every couple of years, or if you don't do too many mods to it, a chip tune is perfectly fine for a slightly modified car. The problem with that on these older cars is that once they get to a certain age, wear and tear on the electrical components is the biggest thing. So once you do a chip tune on these, you're still relying on the factory MAF sensor, you're still relying on the factory uh, ignition coils. Now, can you still upgrade those with a factory ECU? Are there ways to do it? Yes. But what really needs to be taken care of here is the fact that the electronics on these cars are 30 years old. You're running on a computer from 1992. 1989. Imagine trying to browse the internet on a computer from 1989. When you did a vehicle, and I know this isn't the first thing on everyone's mind, because everyone wants to throw an exhaust, do wheels, do suspension, make the car look good, sound good, blah, 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 blah. What it really comes down to is how confident are you with getting into that car and just going anywhere with it and driving it as hard as you want. To me, that's that's ultimately what it comes down to and and, and your confidence level of your vehicle so that's what we're going to talk about today obviously i've got a couple cars here that i've tuned all myself and i'm going to go over those today in this video so hope you guys can learn something and this is this is kind of an important video and it needs to be said it needs to be put out there am i a professional tuner no not by any means but i do all my own tuning i would consider myself a uh, hobbyist tuner now these are the computers that i have in each of my vehicles I pulled them all out just to show you guys for this video right here. Uh, the Honda, I used Honda Data S300. I went from a chipped ECU, which was on Honda Chrome, to S300. I'll get into the differences on that in, later on in this video. So this Honda ECU, I would consider a modified factory ECU. Uh, it's still running on primarily the same hardware with a extra chip that is built into it. I've got a uh, Tatrix cable for the BRZ and we have ECU tech for the BRZ. These are basically considered uh, reflash programmers. And then we have the full-on standalone, which this is what's in my Nissan, my 300ZX. This is a full-on standalone. It's a completely different unit than what came in the vehicle from the factory. This is its own entity. So for starters, let's focus on the standalone because um, primarily I know a lot of you are here for the 300ZX. So we'll dive into the ECU that I use and focus on and why I have a standalone for my Z. Uh, for the most part, it's pretty obvious, but I'm gonna basically explain at what point you should get one for your car and pros and cons to getting one or other standalone ECUs. Um, obviously I have a Haltech, so I'm gonna be a little biased towards that, but I will tap into a little bit of the Link ECUs, Motex, ECU Masters, Pro EFI, um, I know a little bit about those, but not too much. So we'll, we're gonna focus primarily on the Haltech here for the Z and just Nissan JDM imports in general. So for standalone options, we have Haltech, AEM, Link ECU, Motec, Megasquirt, I think I'm missing one. Those are pretty much the big ones. Uh, if you're a domestic guy, you probably are very familiar with the Holly Dominator or Terminator series standalones as well. My personal opinion, if you have a Z or any any 90s Nissan, honestly any 90s car at this point at all, your factory ECU is just out of date. It can't do the stuff that you really need it to do and it, it's you're very limited with the tuning capability um, that is built within the ECU. Unless you're planning on keeping the car 100% stock or just very, very mild modifications to it like intake and exhaust just keep the factory ECU. Honestly, my opinion, if you go to do anything more than that, you're better off just switching to a Haltech or any standalone for that matter. I love my Haltech. It's, it's easy, it's simple to work with, it's simple to learn on. Any information that you need for this, it's out there. 
They're continuously developing. Haltech, I would say, is one of the leading standalone computer companies that are out there to this day. But at what point should you switch to a Haltech? Anything more than a intake and exhaust on the Zs, the GTRs, the 240SXs, Supras, any of these cars. Now, I'm not saying just go out and get just a Haltech. Speak with your tuner, find out whoever's gonna tune the car, and find out what they are comfortable with. This is big, this is very important. Whichever tuner you decide to use, or if you're gonna tune it yourself, do your own research. But whichever tuner you're gonna use, get with them and find out which computer they're comfortable with and they like the best. It may not be what everyone else recommends for your vehicle, but if you don't like what the tuner recommends, find a different tuner. Um, it's as simple as that because a lot of these guys do this every single day and if you want the most out of what that tuner is capable of, you stick with the ECU that they recommend. Now for me, like I said, again, I went with Haltech. Everything's pretty straightforward. I'm not trying to learn a whole different language here or programming language. That each computer company calls certain things differently or they operate a little differently than the others. Now the great thing about Link ECU is it actually goes inside of the factory computer casing. So you pull out the factory motherboard and put in the Link ECU motherboard into the factory computer. Um, that way it looks like you still have the factory ECU in the car. But in all actuality, you have a standalone. Now, a lot of the 2JZ guys I know, um, at least back in the day, used to like to use Pro EFI. So a lot of Supras you'll see with Pro EFI or ECU Masters is another very common one. But honestly, the hardware for those companies, either they need to figure out what they're doing because the hardware for those computers are really getting out of date. I don't have much room to talk because I'm using a Haltech Platinum Pro, which to this day and age, um, that's, that's an older ECU. With that said, if you can, just get a Haltech Elite 2500. So if all this is just too much for you, you just wanna know my personal opinion, um, I would just get a standalone ECU as soon as possible, whether it's a 300ZX, a 240SX, R32, a Supra, RX7, um, just everything needs a standalone. If it was built pre-1999, pre-2002, it needs a standalone, especially the fact that you can run speed density and get rid of your factory MAF. So if you blow a charge pipe off with MAF versus MAP, um, with MAF, you can you will really struggle with getting the car home. Uh, you may be able to limp it home, but it's not gonna be very fun. Whereas with MAP, uh, you could still drive the car home, especially on the Z32s because you got like 15 feet of piping all up in the front of the engine bay. Now, some things to consider with the different ECU brands are how plug and play is it? Is your tuner okay with tuning it? Some of these you have to build a complete harness for, like the Mega Squirt. Uh, certain vehicles will have plug and play harnesses, some will not. A few other things to mention, how much capability do you need for your standalone? If your standalone is only capable of two to three inputs and you wanna run EGTs on every single cylinder bank, then you're probably gonna need something a little newer and a little bit more expensive than your basic uh, Haltech Platinum. You may even need to jump up to a Nexus R3. Features are another thing to consider. For instance, my Haltech Platinum does not have rolling anti-lag. Uh, Haltech Elite does have rolling anti-lag. Just, there's just so many different features that you need to consider and look into. Do your own research ahead of time. And really, it, your best option is to consult with your tuner, tell them what you're doing to your car, and they'll pretty much give you what you need from the get-go. The worst possible thing you can do is just say, I want this ECU and you go buy it and then bring it to a shop and they say, we don't tune that. And then you're kind of stuck with it. For the Honda, um, I, I almost feel like I don't really need to go over this, but um, just for clarification reasons, so many people buy these computers and they don't actually know what they're getting. So Honda is what I would consider a modified ECU. They have added a secondary motherboard into it um, that goes where a standard chip would go. For years now, this Honda S300, S200 has just been the go-to. And the reason for that is because it's simple and it just works much like the Haltech. So if you haven't before, this is what a Honda ECU looks like. And this whole white piece is a Honda board that gets soldered in where a standard chip would normally go. 
primary difference is the software and the function, the amount of functions that you can add into each of these. The inputs and outputs are basically what you have here and here, and you're very limited with the amount that you can have in that. It, I mean, think about a computer from 1993, 1994, like that's, that's what you're working with at the end of the day here. Um, that is the maximum output of this computer. You have a 16-bit ECU versus a 64-bit ECU. Um, I think these are 64-bit. It might even be 32-bit. I don't remember. Now the Honda also has Bluetooth capability. You can connect to it via your phone. So anyways, as far as other companies or ECUs that you can do stuff like this to, um, so you have DSM Link, Niztune, you have Honda. Uh, I'm pretty sure there was one for the Toyotas. I don't know if they're still around to this day. That pretty much does it for the Honda uh, modified ECUs and the chipped ECUs. Now the chipped ECUs, <clears throat> you are able to tune a factory program, essentially, add more fuel, add more timing. Um, but as far as adding extra inputs and outputs, uh, you are incredibly limited with that. Even these are becoming out of date um, and they're still holding value for what they are, surprisingly. I considered going with FuelTech which is a standalone um, that's much more affordable. I know Boosted Boys likes to use the fuel techs, uh, which maybe one day I will with this car. But for the most part, this car is going to be an NA street build, so I don't need to do anything too crazy with it. And as of right now, this is doing perfectly fine for what I need. Uh, back in the day, we used to even use um, piggybacks for air fuel controllers is what they were called. Uh, these were the Apex C, SAFCs, or the VAFCs, which also controlled VTEC. And it basically fools the ECU into adding more fuel than what is actually needed. That's really old school. We, nobody even talks about those anymore. But they were very common on the DSMs and Hondas back in the early 2000s, late 2000s. These were what a lot of people that are currently tuning professionally today started with. Now for the new stuff we have in today's cars, most new vehicle computers are plenty capable of doing a lot. So with that, what we're doing lately is just reflashing them. Um, with the reflash kits, you usually just get one of these um, that plugs into your OBD2 port and you can either connect to this uh, via Bluetooth or USB cable and reflash your computer. I have two here for my BRZ. I have tuned with both of these and one is way more complicated than the other, but at the same time, it's a lot cheaper than the other. So with this, you get what you pay for. Now, this one here is a Tatrix cable. Uh, there are a couple different software that you can use to tune this. Most people like to use ROM Raider to edit these and upload them to the vehicles. Now, if you aren't thoroughly familiar with tuning vehicles and how it operates in general, this is gonna be quite the learning experience because it was for me. Uh, basically, you need one software to download the tune from your vehicle, another software to modify said tune, and then you need definition files to upload the tune back into the vehicle and or read the file that you have downloaded from the vehicle because it's downloaded as a hexadecimal file. It gets very complex very quickly and if you have the wrong hexadecimal file for, or definition file rather, uh, for your tune, you'll end up with a whack tune in the car that doesn't like um, what it's reading and it'll start doing all sorts of weird stuff. It's not something you really wanna mess up. Now we have the ECU Tech, which is your standard run of the mill reflash device for today. Now ECU Tech is used in everything from BRZs, FRSs, Mark V Supras, GTRs, I believe they even have stuff for BMWs now. As far as reflashing vehicles go, I, this is really as straightforward and simple as it gets. I wish I would have just done this from the get-go instead of running the Tatrix table. Don't get me wrong, it was really cool to learn on this and get everything kind of figured out and how tunes actually work and tune files actually work. It makes me appreciate this a lot more. Again, I got this after already tuning with the Haltech and I tuned with Honda Chrome when I first started out, which is just the chip, which I have somewhere. Oh, let me go get that. Well, I can't believe it. Um, many of you that are watching this are probably gonna be like, whoa, he actually has one of those. 
Um, yes, believe it or not, I still have my Ostrich 2.0 that I used to tune with Chrome. This is what I started on. Um, it's seen better days. It sat in the Honda while the Honda sat for about three or four years. I cleaned it up a little bit. To be honest, I don't even know if it works. Um, I had to get a new cable for it and oop, we got one pin that's a little loose. That's the kind of stuff you'd have to deal with on these older tuning devices. So with this, you would stick this into the ECU uh, where this white thing is here and you just plug it in, clamp it down and then this would send the data through here which would translate it to a USB drive to send it to your computer which you would tune over Honda Chrome or I think even Honda if you have the licensing for it. I don't even know if you can get these anymore. I, I, it's funny because I people ask me like, oh, who's gonna be tuning your Z when I tell them it's gonna be like 900 something horsepower? And they look at me kind of weird like, oh, do you even know what you're doing? Do you even know how to tune? Uh, honestly, I didn't realize how much tuning I've actually done on my own in my own vehicles until I look at all of this right here um and and realize uh not to mention I've, I've helped friends out with like link ecu i had a couple buddies with some um, mega squirt stuff over the years 90 percent of tuning devices that are out there today are a form of one of these that i have in front of me um, and now just to separate them again we have the standalone we have a modified ecu and then we could have the chipped ECU as well, which is without this extra motherboard. And then we also have the reflash programmers. Also, just to add into this video, if you're looking to get started with tuning your vehicles yourself, like I am, or I do rather, here's my suggestions. Number one, start with the simple things. Start with the car that's already running and a known working tune on it. For instance, I started with my Honda. It was very simple, it's naturally aspirated. I actually started tuning the car when it was on the single cam motor. For your starting out, my biggest suggestion, start simple. So start with fuel timing, then focus on knock sensor, a uh, knock signal. Make sure you're not getting any knock. Many older Hondas don't even have a knock sensor in them. So that's another thing to consider. Be very careful with adding ignition timing if you don't have a knock sensor. Very important thing also is to make sure all of your senses, sensors are calibrated correctly. So this goes for your wideband sensors. Uh, again, your knock sensors. If for any reason you have a standalone computer such as a Megasquirt, where you actually have to tell the ECU what type of signal or frequency is actually considered knock, you're really diving in deep there. Uh, I would probably take a step back at that point and find somebody else who knows how to tune that or get it calibrated for you by somebody professionally. Then, once you get your knock system dialed in, your air fuels dialed in, you can start adding ignition timing. Uh, if you want to add ignition timing, you're also, this will also vary based on your engine setup, your intake temps, and the fuel you are using. E85 is much more lenient, you can run more ignition timing, but you also need to run more fuel with that. This is typically how people make more power out of E85. It just kind of goes on from there, because then you can get into the really complex stuff, uh, such as boost control and pig controls and uh, and also once you get into the more advanced BRZ, FT86, GT86 stuff, um, you really dive into multiple ignition tables and multiple fuel tables. Honestly, anybody can learn to do it. Almost anybody. Uh, just gotta take the time to learn to get there. I think that's gonna do it for the most part for this video. Uh, it's something quick, something simple, but something that needed to get out there and needed to be said. But anyways, I hope that helped you all make an informed decision on what kind of ECU, what kind of tuning you need to do in the future with your car. So take care and we'll see you all next time.